Right. Uh, morning once again. Welcome. Uh, we're going to look at uh, John chapter 20 and uh, verse 24 onwards. It's about um, Thomas, um, the conversation that the Lord has with Thomas, right? And uh, Thomas, um, he says, unless, verse 25, he says, unless he's telling the disciples, unless I see the hands, unless I put my finger uh, in the wounds of the Lord, and uh, unless I see the side and put my hand there, um, I will not believe. I, I will not believe in the resurrection, right? So the people have said, hey, we saw the Lord. So he he's, he's very skeptical. He says, I will not believe in the resurrection. So then uh, we see that um, uh, the Lord says he appears after eight days, after he actually declares this, after eight days, the Lord, Lord appears. Um, and they are in a closed room. And then he just appears in their midst. And the Lord says to Thomas, um, you know, reach your finger here, put your hands here, see, it is me, it is I. Uh, and he says, do not be unbelieving, but believing. Okay. And then um, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. So he's convinced, he's, con con you know, he says, my Lord and my God. And the Lord says this, verse 29, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Um, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Okay, because you've seen me, because you've seen these things, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believed, which means that they've not had tangible proof or maybe their reasoning is not satisfied intellectually. But blessed are those who believe. And he goes on to say in verse 31, uh, I mean, well, sorry, it's um, like John writes this. He says, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Right? These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you may have life in his name. So the thing is this, the word of God uh, is packed with proof, is packed with um, you know, his life-giving word, of course, uh, life-giving truth, which produces faith in us, which brings us to that place of believing. Okay, So we can believe. And what really produces that faith is coming back to the word. So he's saying, these are written that you may believe. Okay. So, uh, the, so the fact is this, that um, the Lord is saying, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. You know, they've not maybe seen the tangible, um, you know, right before their eyes. It's not something tangible. It's not something manifest, but that they, they have believed um, because of who Jesus is, right? So sometimes we have, you know, questions, uh, what, how, when, right? But bringing us back to believing in who Jesus is, when we are strong in who he is, which means the word of God, this is written that we may believe in who Jesus is, right? So when we believe in who Jesus is, then the other aspects of or other details of what and where and when and how will, will flow out of that, will flow out of our belief in who he is. Right? If we are strong in our belief in who he is, then what and how and when, where will will take care right? and then and I just reminded that the Lord says you know seek first the kingdom seek first the kingdom of God seek first the rule and reign and his righteousness and all these things you know the what and how how will fall in place right okay so let's let's pray and then let's ask the Lord Lord you lead us to that place place of belief lead us to that place of you know draw us back to the word so that we might come to believe who you are in all that fullness. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you, God. Thank you for these words. We thank you, Lord, that um, for that exhortation. Blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. Lord, bring us to that place. Take us back to the word. Lord, I pray that, you, that, that your word, Lord, will be a rich deposit in our hearts, God. There will always be a rich deposit, Father God. And so we might believe, God, not seeing, but yet believing. 
And uh, when we believe, you said, Lord, that we will see the glory of God. Believe and you will see the glory of God. And Father, we thank you that, Lord, that you lead us to that place of faith. And today, God, I pray that there will be a fresh impartation of faith. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just stir up and release that gift of faith in us, God, in our spirit. And that we might, Lord, in our thinking, speaking, in our actions, God, Lord, in our prayers, God, Lord, that it will be filled with faith. It will be faith-filled works, God. Yes, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Strengthen us in the inner man. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, we are back to life skills. So I hope we are putting things to practice. Anyone doing that? Or are we still waiting? Waiting for life to happen so that we can <laughs> put our skills to practice. Okay, so we've been looking at um, you know uh, a few important um, the aspects of listening, right? Effective listening and the importance of that. So so I've been trying to put that, you know, every time I want to interrupt, every time I you know feel a need to uh, just jump in and say some things. Um, uh, yeah, so, so I've been having this, telling myself, no, just wait. Just wait for a bit, listen fully. Um, even if there is a pause, even if people are talking slowly, you know, just wait, receive, um, be patient and listen to what they have to say. And I, I must say that it has, you know, paid off, you know. So, um, because not all people are temper temperamentally like me, right? People are different. People can... And the rate of speech and conversation, everything is different. So, yeah, so I'm able to uh, just tell myself and practice effective listening. Okay, uh, so I hope you get to do that also. Okay, so right today we're going to look at um, time and time management. Okay, so let me share the notes. Okay, time. Right. So how I, I'm sure that we have come to realize. You know, whatever your age is, uh, I'm sure you come to realize that hey, time is a difficult beast altogether to manage, <laughs> right? It's uh, it's like um, it, it's uh, it's just flowing, right? And um, it's it's sometimes it's 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 so difficult to ha we want enough of it, we want more of it, but this is all we have, right? So so management of time is very very important, very crucial. Right, so sometimes we see people uh, who are who are really experts at it, right? So who are, who are never in a hurry. For example, I I remember, uh, you know, I can think of Pastor Ashish. Whenever we have a conversation, I'm sure he has 101 things, or maybe you know more than that, a million things to do. But when we sit down and have a conversation, it's always relaxed. It's always okay. So so much so I'm thinking maybe you know he has lots of time, <laughs> but. Uh, you know that uh, so that that's one thing and i also remember uh, when um, we had these meetings here uh, and i remember bumping into joyce mayer no no the no, uh, this is a person we had a there's a conference and there was these meetings like john mayer joyce mayer was speaking and you know hillsong team was leading worship and all that I, and i just bumped into this person who actually was the overall in charge of it you know operations head so they just said okay he's the operations head so normally you know that at that point in time i was handling the administration of you know church and we had just started uh, bible college and so many other things so i was always in a hurry always trying to you know uh, trying to rushing and always you know things were a uh, lot, lot of loose ends to be finished but i saw this person i was really inspired because he was very relaxed he was very relaxed. He was walking around in his shorts and T-shirt, and the meeting was, you know, it was an, uh, uh, sprawled out, multiple campuses, multiple events happening at the same time. But he was very relaxed. Right? So then uh, it just uh, t told me that here's someone who, who well, uh, maybe has planned things better, who's also managing his time well, right? So, and that is when you can, uh, so, Management of time uh, is a possibility, 
you know it's not something that um, that cannot be done it is possible right so the more we put it to practice the more effective we will be right so it's it's not uh, it's not difficult it, 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 is it challenging yes till we get the hang of it um, there will always be you know those seasons when there are a lot of things to do and not enough time and and so on uh, right so let's look at some of the keys to good um, to uh, management of time right good time management okay so very important thing for us to know is that um, is for us to understand that uh, two aspects okay when it comes to tasks, when it comes to things that we need to do, okay, um, there are certain tasks that are urgent, which means that it needs to be done now. Okay, it's urgent, and there are certain things that are important. And uh, you personally, you, you and I personally, we need to really um, come to that place of understanding or discerning or distinguishing between what is urgent and what is important. OK, so certain things, yes, they are urgent. Like, for example, if uh, like if the phone rings, if you don't pick it up, you miss the call. Right? Is it it is urgent, right? but you might pick the call and then you realize that that's, um, you know, somebody calling up to sell something, somebody calling up to you know remind you that the bill needs to be paid, whatever. So we realize that it is uh, while it is urgent, it's not an important thing. You know, you miss the call. That's fine. You, know, you, you you can always get a text. You'll get, always get a reminder, and so on. So there are certain tasks that are urgent, but we realize that there are certain tasks that are important. Okay, and so let's let's look at this grid. Okay, so what what is it when it comes to time? Okay, I have twenty four hours. Now, how do I go about doing my things? Go about doing my tasks. You know. Uh, if I have a to-do list for that day, how do I go about, uh, you know, planning? How do I go about doing it, rather, right? So this priority make, uh, matrix helps us, right? So we have things of high urgency, we have things of high importance. So, it, so how urgent is the task? That's the x-axis or left to right, and top to bottom, how important is the task? So, you know, there could be low importance and high importance. OK, so look at the um, top left corner. OK, so top, top left corner, it, it refers to tasks or actions that, that are high in urgency, but also high in importance. OK, so which means they are urgent and they are important, which means if you mix, miss it, they are, there's going to be consequence. Right? Urgency meaning it needs to be done now. And also importance, it has consequences, critical. Okay, so it's urgent and it's important. So these are things that we will attack first, or we will we need to do first. It's urgent and it's important. Maybe there are things that are not so urgent, which are low in urgency, but are still high in importance. Okay, which means you can do it second, or you can do it third, or you can do it later today but it's important enough to be done today but it's not urgent enough to be done immediately okay so when you look at this list of things maybe there are certain things you know maybe i need to call someone uh, it's not urgent okay it's not like they are they are sick or unwell or they they require my immediate intervention but it's important right it's an important call i need to make that call but i can do it today right it's not urgent Right, so that's the second one. The third one is things that are highly, you know, uh, high in urgency but are low in importance. Okay, they are high in urgency in the sense it could be. Um, what are some things that you can think of? You know, any anything that you can think of. They are maybe in a day high in urgency but low in importance. Anything that you can think of. Anyone? Which means that there are no tasks like that. That's great. <laughs> OK, so if it's um, high in urgency and low in importance, yeah, that's what happens, right? Uh, many times we don't, maybe 
there are no tasks in that grid. Okay, it's okay, fine. <laughs> what about things that are low urgency and low importance? Now these are things. <laughs> this is what this is. These are things that actually steal time. Okay, they are low in urgency. They are low in importance. But the thing is, you want to do it. Right? You feel that, hey, I, I really like doing these things. I really like watching these videos. I really like post. I need to post some things. I need to post these stories. I need to post these pictures. Well, they are, you know, it's it's more like a hobby. It's more like a leisure activity, maybe. Uh, they are not urgent. They are not important. Uh, but, you know, you, 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 you like doing it. Okay. And instead of not doing it or you know even delegating it to others um, we end up doing that first excuse me excuse me so we end up doing that first and that results in a lot of waste of time or you know the thing that is of high urgency and high importance maybe it's an unpleasant task right maybe it's something um, that is uh, that requires talking to someone. Excuse me, and uh, you don't want to do it. Maybe it's maybe um, planning for something, and it, you, it requires a lot of mental work, a lot of reading up, a lot of searching online, and then you like it's taking a lot out of me. So I don't enjoy it as much. Right. So we we don't even start it. We don't even attempt it. So this is the thing, right? So this matrix actually helps us. You know, is it urgent? Is it important? Is it uh, is it very important but not urgent? But is it highly urgent? But it's of low importance, low in urgency, low in importance. Okay. So this this will really help us help us. Uh, and when we make our you know to do list, um, Christian leadership course, did we do it last semester? Yeah. So when we, in Christian leadership, we looked at the to-do list, right? We looked at the 18-minute um, to-do list, if you remember. Um, so we saw that you know you can actually divide your to-do list into tasks, your key areas, and so it it has multiple you know things there, multiple uh, lists within lists, and so you don't miss out on any of those key result areas. You know, these, these are this is these are the these are the ministries that I need to do cover. Maybe these are my prime responsibilities, and and each of these are equally important, right? So when we have such areas, maybe four or five areas, and each of these are equally important, and we need to kind of cover them, um, you know, at the same time, and uh, we can have a to-do list, and within the to-do list, we can prioritize based on this. Okay, what is urgent? What is important? What is not? Right? OK, so now another thing that actually steals our time is us being unorganized, us being disorganized. OK, um, so for example, uh, Jeffy and I just took a look at my desktop and said, oh, that's, that looks like a blueprint, you know, like some plan, <laughs> something. You know, so this desktop is due for a, uh, my laptop you know, desktop is due for a solid reorganizing. Right now, I can find the things. Right, I always put things uh, in folders, etc. There are certain things there which I just kept. You know, uh, okay, I'll put it later, and it says just there. So yeah, so organizing ourselves, especially information, right? Um, that's very important, right? How, where do I put these reports? Uh, where do I access it? It could be as simple as the clothes, daily clothes that we need to wear. Um, it could be as simple as that, as basic as that. Ingredients uh, for our, you know, for in the kitchen that we need to label and keep, or things that we put in the refrigerator, right? Uh, which we maybe if it's a plan, if there is a plan, okay. Otherwise, you need to keep everything. You know, where do I put it? Where did I put it? What do I take out? Right? So things like that. So uh, organizing our information, organizing our things for easy retrieval will really help us save time and if we if we need to um, recycle certain things in the sense if we need to reuse it right and um, that will also help you know more in terms of you know if you're talking about 
your profession or uh, work, what are some things that I reuse over and over again? What are some, let's say, some reports that I need to send? Uh, I don't have to start from scratch. Right? I don't have to start from the uh, saying, OK, these are the categories, and these are information. We keep a, what we call as a template. Right? We keep a format and use that, like refresh that, reuse that, okay? um, and maybe add to it. Okay, maybe there are certain emails that you you send every week. You know, maybe there's a welcome email that you send for the first time visitors. Maybe there's a welcome message that you text for the people. Now you don't have to, you know, go in and type it out. Typing is uh, typing it out. You know, you're saying, okay, I can type very fast, but still, you 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 are using some amount of time in order to do that. So that can be in a template. You know, that can be a set message. Of course, we can add to it in order to add more spontaneity and freshness and maybe a personal touch to it, but that can be in a template, OK? Um, the second thing is to pick our moments, OK? Now, um, you know, this, this is how we are wired. You know, certain times of the day, we are the freshest, OK? And it, and it differs from person to person, right? Some people are very fresh early in the morning. And some people are very fresh late at night, right? And when people are just leaving the office, that is when they are actually starting. <laughs> you know, so of course, certain things we need to change, right? Uh, especially if you're working in a team, uh, we need to bring ourselves to be available, to be productive when the team is there, right? So, um, so that matters. But then, you know, if there are times of day when we work better, so. We can schedule those high urgency, high important jobs uh, at that time, right? When, if if, if we can, you know, because it's urgent and it's important. What is the time of day when we are fresh? When we are, when we have lots of energy, when our mind is clear, and um, you know, so we can actually schedule those things uh, for that time and uh, get it done, right? So other things like maybe after lunch, you know, when we are. <clears throat> slowly you know not at the best maybe after a meal or you know we're not at the best of our we're not fighting fit you know uh, maybe we can do other things right uh, you know some routine tasks tasks that that don't require much thinking that don't require much physically emotionally etc right so we can we can indulge in those um, uh, tasks right so we can schedule so it's good to pick the, our moments pick when we want to do etc Right. Um, the third thing, don't procrastinate. Right, and I'm telling myself, <laughs> uh, don't procrastinate, which means put off what we have already put off till today. Okay, that's procrastination. Right, We're putting off till tomorrow what we have already put off till today. Okay, so there's a reason why we procrastinate. Right, there could be a very very good reason. Um, maybe we don't like that task. Okay, we're not comfortable doing that task. Um, maybe we find it too overwhelming to start off with. Right? It's, it's I don't know where to begin, and uh, I, the minute I think of that task, maybe my stomach feels a little weird, and I feel a lot of fear coming in, and I don't know how to get. You know, I, I don't have enough information, so I said, okay, I have another time. Right, so we keep putting it off for various reasons. So, um, so the thing is, you know, we need to get help. Maybe, if, maybe if it's something to do with lack of information, right, on how we need to get started, what we need to do. Maybe it's that glad lack of clarity which is stopping us, right? So we can do that. Uh, we can get that information, or maybe we can get help to get started, right, and then. We can uh, get. Maybe we don't have the skills. You know, we are supposed to, um, you know, produce something. Maybe give a report. Maybe um, you know, whatever, right? So, but we 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 feel that I don't have the skills right now. I don't have the skills for it. I don't have the learnings for it. And I can't, you know, I can't uh, get into learning that right now. Now, you know, I need to get the answers or the solution. So get help. You know, get in touch with someone who's good at it. Get in touch with someone who can actually, uh, maybe you can learn from that person a little later. But then right now, you can get their help and uh, and get done, rather than 
waiting and saying that, OK, one day I will learn, one day I will get good at it, and then I will attempt the task. OK, so that's about uh, procrastination. And just give me a minute. I think I have a video on procrastination. Let me just check. Um, OK. Let me... Um, just one minute. So any, any questions, anything that you want to um, add to what we looked at just now about time? Uh, anything that, to you, that has helped you personally? Um, you know, getting on top of a schedule, managing time well, some practical things. Maybe you can share that. Yeah. You want to share, Jafina? Sorry? I should mute my mic. Okay. Okay. Uh, so basically, I am not a very organized person, but I do love to be organized. Uh, learning this subject has helped me to just remember me again and again. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, I am started organizing my expense a little bit. I'm learning. Uh, how my expenses are going and i also planned my timings but i still have some struggles with it because uh, i plan something something else happens on the day or uh, sometimes we just don't have the mood to do it or something uh, so i think this uh, matrix that we saw today might help uh, mm -hmm. like what's my agency what's uh, mm -hmm. i thought of maybe making it for like a uh, a matrix for a month or this whole September, what might be the most important thing. And I can also do it for every day. So I have it in my mind. Might help, but yeah, I'm learning so many things. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Um, on managing time. So uh, one of the things that has helped me um, is, um, you know, um, is not to slow down near the finish line. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's something you know we, because we've accomplished maybe eighty percent, ninety percent of the task, and uh, we tend to relax. Okay, after that, saying, oh, wow, look, look, you look at it and you say, wow, now I can reward myself. Now I can relax a bit. Okay, And then that that becomes, it's like when you wake up early and then you realize, wow, I have so much time. Let me sleep for five minutes. And, and then you realize that, oh, you actually overslept. It's like that. So um, what really uh, helps us is not to... Um, not to relax too much. It's not, not not saying resting, but it's like even before we cross the finish line. You know, you know, you know. This this is a task. It needs to be done. Maybe it's a project. Maybe it's a you know a, a, an activity. Maybe it's some learning. Um, don't reward and rest too much before the finish line. Don't slow down before the finish line. You know, that's something that um, you know practically. Um, that's something that has helped just to keep in mind, right? Um, and also, of course, um, yeah, when it comes to to-do lists, when it comes to things that we need to do for the next day, it's good that we um, uh, that that we kind of plan the previous day itself. Okay, um, just it, it's not like going into the intense uh, details of it, but to say, okay, these are some things that I need to address, that I need to look, uh, I need to cover the next day. Okay, so just to put that out. So rather than spending time. The next day on it, you already have a head start. So having a head start helps uh, if you just put that down, right? Uh, another thing that really uh, this person shared and really helped me is that um, uh, like frees up our mind. Uh, that it's a simple thing, right? So 
let's say you need to do certain things, right? And rather than keeping it in your mind and and just going over and over, you know, going over and over saying that, okay, I need to do this. I need to get this done. I've not done it yet. I need to do it. Rather than that, just put it down on paper or maybe on your phone. Okay. So what happens is that thought doesn't bother you anymore. I just, you know, it's a very simple thing. You know, you put it on things saying, okay, I will take care of this. This is a list. This is a, you know, this is something that uh, I've, I want to enter. I, I'm going to look at it, but you put it down. You transfer it. It's like literally, you know, that thing going from your mind onto the paper or on your phone, and then you're free to look at or do certain things that are uh, on hand. Okay, that that also is something that I found to be very uh, helpful. Okay, so let me just share with the, with you uh, a video. Uh, we have some time. I think we might be able to finish it. Otherwise, um, you know, maybe you can watch it later. Also, let me share that with you. Okay, um, this is a TED talk, and I don't know if I shared this about the mind of the procrastinator. Um, okay, so let anyway, let me share. Okay. So in college, I was a government major, which means I had to write a lot of papers. Now, when a normal student writes a paper, they might spread the work out a little like this. So you know, you get started. Maybe a little slowly, but you get enough done in the first week that, with some heavier days later on, everything gets done and things stay civil. And I would want to do that like that. That would be the plan. I would, uh, I would have it all ready to go. But then, then, then actually, the paper would, would come along, and then I would kind of do this. <laughs> and that would happen every single paper. But then came my 90-page senior thesis, a paper you're supposed to spend a year on. I knew for a paper like that, my normal workflow was not an option. It was way too big a project. So I planned things out, and I decided it kind of had to go something like this. This is how the year would go. So I'd start off light, and I'd bump it up in the middle months, and then at the end, I would kick it up into high gear. It's just like a little staircase. How hard could it be? Just walk up the stairs. No big deal, right? But then, funniest thing happened. Those first few months. They came and went, and I, I couldn't quite do stuff. So we had an awesome new revised plan. <laughs> and then, but then those middle months actually went by, and I didn't really write words. And so we were here. And then two months turned into one month, which turned into two weeks. And one day I woke up with three days until the deadline, <laughs> still not having written a word. And so I did the only thing I could. I wrote 90 pages over 72 hours, pulling not one but two all-nighters. Humans are not supposed to pull two all-nighters. Sprinted across campus, dove in slow motion, and got it in just at the deadline. I thought that was the end of everything. But a week later, I get a call. It's the school, and they say, "Is this Tim Urban?" And I say, "Yeah." And they say, "We need to talk about your thesis." And I say, "Okay." And they say it's the best one we've ever seen. <laughs> that did not happen. <laughs> it was a very, very bad thesis. I just wanted to enjoy that one moment when all of you thought this guy is amazing. <laughs> no, no, it was very, very bad. So, PowerPoint versus Canva or Google Slides for your next presentation. What should you use? The answer is PowerPoint, and here's why. Because anyway, today I'm a writer, blogger, guy. I write the blog. Wait, but why? And a couple of years ago, I decided to write about procrastination. My behavior has always perplexed the non-procrastinators around me, and I wanted to explain to the non-procrastinators of the world. What goes on in the heads of procrastinators, and why we are the way we are? Now, I had a hypothesis 
that the, the brains of procrastinators were actually different than the brains of other people. And to test this, I found an MRI lab that actually let me scan both my brain and the brain of a proven non-procrastinator, and I, so I could compare them. And I actually brought them here to show you today. And I want you to take a look carefully to see if you can notice a difference. And I know that if you're not a trained brain expert, it's not that obvious, but just take a look, okay? So here's the brain of a non-procrastinator. <laughs> Now, here's my brain. There is a difference. Both brains have a rational decision maker in them, but the procrastinator's brain also has an instant gratification monkey. Now, what does this mean for the procrastinator? Well, it means everything's fine until this happens. So the rational decision maker will make the rational decision to do something productive, but the monkey doesn't like that plan. So he actually takes the wheel and he says. Actually, let's read the entire Wikipedia page of the Nancy Kerrigan Tanya Harding scandal because I just remember that that happened. <laughs> then, then we're going to go over to the fridge. We're going to see if there's anything new in there since 10 minutes ago. <laughs> After that, we're going to go on a YouTube spiral that starts with videos of Richard Feynman talking about magnets and ends much, much later with us watching interviews with Justin Bieber's mom. <laughs> All of that's going to take a while, so we're not going to really have room on the schedule for any work today. Sorry. <sighs> Now, what is going on here? The instant gratification monkey does not seem like a guy you want behind the wheel. He lives entirely in the present moment. He has no memory of the past, no knowledge of the future, and he only cares about two things: easy and fun. Now, in the animal world. That works fine. If you're a dog and you spend your whole life doing nothing other than easy and fun things, you're a huge success. <laughs> and to the monkey, humans are just another animal species. He has to keep well slept, well fed, and propagating into the next generation. Which in tribal times might have worked okay, but if you haven't noticed, now we're not in tribal times. We're in an advanced civilization, and the monkey does not know what that is. Which is why we have another guy in our brain. The rational decision maker, who gives us the ability to do things no other animal can do. We can visualize the future. We can see the big picture. We can make long-term plans. And he wants to take all of that into account. And he wants to just have us do whatever makes sense to be doing right now. Now, sometimes it makes sense to be doing things that are easy and fun, like when you're having dinner or going to bed or enjoying well-earned leisure time. That's why there's an overlap. Sometimes they agree. But other times, it makes much more sense to be doing things that are harder and less pleasant for the sake of the big picture, and that's when we have a conflict. And for the procrastinator, that conflict tends to end a certain way every time, leaving him spending a lot of time in this orange zone, an easy and fun place that's entirely out of the make sense circle. I call it the dark playground. <laughs> Now. The dark playground is a place that all of you procrastinators out there know very well. It's where leisure activities happen at times when leisure activities are not supposed to be happening. The fun you have in the dark playground isn't actually fun because it's completely unearned, and the air is filled with guilt, dread, anxiety, self-hatred—all those good procrastinator feelings. And the question is: In this situation, with the monkey behind the wheel, how does the procrastinator ever get himself over here to this blue zone? A less pleasant place, but where really important things happen. Well, it turns out that the procrastinator has a guardian angel, someone who's always looking down on him and watching over him in his darkest moments. Someone called the panic monster. <laughs> Now, the panic monster is dormant most of the time, but he suddenly wakes up. Any time a deadline gets too close, or there's danger of public embarrassment, a career disaster, or some other scary consequence, and importantly, he's the only thing that the monkey is terrified of. Now, he became very relevant in my life pretty recently, because the people of TED reached out to me about six months ago and invited me to do a TED talk. <laughs> Now, of course, I said yes. It's always been a dream of mine to have done a TED talk in the past. <laughs> But 
But in the middle of all this excitement, the rational decision maker seemed to have something else in his mind. He was saying, "Are we clear on what we just accepted? Do we do we get?" What's going to be now happening one day in the future? We need to sit down and work on this right now. And the monkey said, "Totally agree, but also let's just open Google Earth and let's zoom into the bottom of India, like 200 feet above the ground, and we're going to scroll up for two and a half hours till we get to the top of the country, so we can get a better feel for India." <laughs> so that's what we did that day. As six months turned into four, and then two, and then one, the people of TED decided to release the speakers. And I opened up the website, and there was my face staring right back at me. And guess who woke up? <laughs> so the panic monster starts losing his mind, and a few seconds later, the whole system's in mayhem. <laughs> And the monkey, who remember, he's terrified of the panic monster. Boom! He's up the tree, and finally, finally, the rational decision maker can take the wheel, and I can start working on the talk. Now, the panic monster explains all kinds of pretty insane procrastinated behavior, like how someone like me could spend two weeks unable to start the opening sentence of a paper, and then miraculously find the unbelievable work ethic to stay up all night and write eight pages. And this entire situation with the three characters—this is the procrastinator's system. It's not pretty, but in the end, it works. And this is what I decided to write about on the blog just a couple of years ago. Now I want. Okay, <laughs> I think that、uh, kind of gave us an insight into what really happens. Maybe some of us have gone through those emotions and you know experienced the same thing: the panic, the you know all those anxiety and fear.、Uh, yeah, just goes on to、uh, explain to us. Of course, he does it in a very humorous way, but we know the reality of it, right?、Um, like certain things we miss out, certain things are. Not done in the best way possible because of procrastination. If you want to watch the rest of the video,、um, I'll just put the link there. You can actually,、uh, you know, you can copy paste. You can watch it、uh, for the e-learning e- e- students. I'll,、uh, you know, I'll upload it in the discussion page so you can take a look at it. Okay. Okay. So,、um, yeah. So,、uh, continuing with、uh, just a couple of thoughts.、Um, About about management of time. Okay,、um, one of the things that we normally tend to do when we are maybe reaching a deadline,、uh, you know, when we don't have much time, is we try to do multiple things at the same time, right? We try to multitask,、uh, multiple things. Maybe、um, you know, we are doing one thing at a time.、Um, I'm sorry,、uh, we we start by you know opening up many windows. Doing certain things on each of those, and then this always results in some error or、uh, you know some things that we miss out, okay? And we miss out on the details, right?、Um, because、uh, we, we are not designed that way, and、uh, we sometimes think, okay, maybe we can multitask. Maybe we are created to multitask. No, but actually, the brain works on one thing at a time, and it constantly switches. You know, that's what people. Uh, I mean, the scientists say that, and medical people also say that、uh, the brain does. Yeah, it, it's it has infinite capabilities the way God designed it, but it switches from one task to another very quickly. So we think that we are actually multitasking, but actually no. No, we are focusing on one thing at a time, right? So,、um, so it, it's better if we avoid that and focus on one thing. Maybe it's some deep learning. Maybe it's some, you know, some、uh, intense mental activity that is required. Right? We focus on one thing, finish it, and then move on. Okay.、Uh, lastly, stay calm. Keep things in perspective. Don't be overwhelmed by the the enormity of the tasks or the、uh, you know the the, the maybe the、um, uh, intensity of it or the number of tasks that are there. Um, don't be overwhelmed. You know, start start small, and keep building. Okay, so、uh, so these are some things for us to keep in mind. Simple things, 
but if we would do that, um, it will enable us to, you know, again, just want to show that matrix. Um, this is quite uh, important. It's, it's, a, it's a good tool to use, right? Um, and this would help us. So the best thing for us is to start early, to start ahead, and we would come to a place of really managing our time well. And um, even as we, um, you know, as we maybe move up in our responsibilities, we have, um, you know, greater responsibilities are entrusted to us. It's uh, very, very important that we get a hang of this. And this skill is something that we need to, um, you know, keep honing, keep improving on um, if you need to do things effectively. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here. And continue next class. We will look at uh, management of finances, money management. Again, um, simple things, simple concepts, uh, which will really help us. Right? Okay. Thank you. Have a great week. Uh, God bless. We'll meet again.